my name is Krista from Plant Lux. Hi, nice to see you today. Today's video, we are talking about the Monstera Thai Constellation. What a gorgeous plant this is. This is the care of the Thai Constellation, also propagation and pest prevention and treatment and maintenance as well. So let's get right into it. And today we are talking first about light prefers bright and direct light, so avoid placing it in direct sunlight because the direct sunlight can burn the leaves. I have an example for you because I've accidentally done it. I put it in too much bright light and it burned straight through the leaves. So that is why we do not place our Thai constellation in direct sunlight or in a too hot of a south facing window because that can happen, okay? So save yourself the, the, the trouble of <laughs> burning your plant. Uh, all right, watering. Allow the top inch of the soil to dry out between waterings. Over watering can cause root rot. So always make sure that you're checking your roots. This is a brand new baby, but it's already doing really well in the root department. Make sure you saturate the soil with the water so that it goes all the way through and out the bottom. You want to water your plant very thoroughly. Now this guy was a concern of mine because you can kind of see some discoloration down at the bottom, but he's actually doing really well. Um, and if you check the bottom, it is starting to come out the bottom. This is a brand new propagation. Now this guy is very light, he's very light, even though he's one of the big ones, okay? Because the soil did dry out. So probably ready for another watering. Just for the sake of it, I kind of want to just give it a little tug just to see how the roots are doing. Oh, they're in there, definitely. I don't see them coming out the bottom yet. And in all honesty, I would, I would drill more holes right here I didn't do that and I should do that. Okay, so always check the moisture level before watering your Thai constellation. This is really important because that is how you grow one very successfully is by not overwatering, not underwatering, and frequently checking the soil. And while you're watering, check the leaves. Always check the leaves. Spider mites really like to hang out under here and suck on the sap of these, and that's how they thrive on the undersides. And then before you know it, they'll be kind of brown tinged, and then, you know, it'll be a little too late, so to speak, but not too late. You can still treat it, and you still have beautiful foliage. All right, so humidity. So the Monstera obviously loves humidity. The more humid environment, the better. You can mist the leaves regularly if you wish. Um, I haven't had any problems with, you know, any diseases or anything like that. Don't overdo concentrated um, fertilizer. Uh, not a lot though, just a stupid little bit amount in their misting bottles. And I personally don't do that. I don't feel I need to because mine are growing pretty well, but I have heard of other people, people doing it. Uh, you can do that. You can have a, a humidifier that works also. So either of those methods are going to be great. All right. Uh, the next thing is temperature. They love it hot. They love to be warm. Okay. They do not like drafts. They do not like the AC. They do not like to, it to be cool or coldish. <laughs> they are very tolerant of certain um, temperature conditions, but not of the cold. If it's too cold, like below 55, they'll probably will die or have at least a little bit of leaf death, death, excuse me. Uh, so keep the temperature uh, between 70 and I would say 85, 80 is ideal probably for these guys. But you know, I mean, if it's indoors, these guys are doing just great. Count on keeping these away from any vents where air conditioning would be uh, coming into the room or a cold window in the winter. 
that will not be a good place for them. Okay, to have them near a window, wonderful. Pull it back though so that the leaves aren't getting cool air. So fertilization, what kind of fertilizer did I use to grow this plant? Uh, this plant was fertilized by a special combination mix that I use myself. Now, um, I am a big advocate for some commercial brands that are like the blue ones, but I'm not gonna say which ones. Uh, but I do use a special fertilizer for my plants and I do have a certain treatment method that I like to use in order to get big leaves and I, I've so far seen it that it works and I really love it. So I think the proof is in the pudding. I think you can see it for yourself. I did not buy this plant like this. I grew it like this. So um, I guess it works, but remember, so fertilizer on its own is not gonna give you a result of big leaves. You have to have it in the right lighting. You have to have the correct watering regimen. You have to um, take care of leaves. You have to give it some love. That is part of the plant care routine. It is important to feed your plant at least once a month. So during the growing season, a lot of the popular opinion is to fertilize. I, however, fertilize every single time I water most of the time. If I'm in a hurry and I miss a fertilization, it doesn't matter because I'm fertilizing literally almost every single time I water. Now I have diluted the fertilizer that I use every single time. You have to dilute it, especially for different plant species because they're not as tolerant of getting an ongoing fertilization treatment. So if you don't, um, you know, dilute it, it could end up browning the outer edges of your leaves because the fertilizer has to go somewhere and it's going to come out through their leaves and then the tips. So make sure that you're diluting your fertilizer if you are doing a regimen that it's, it's better to, to kind of err on the side of caution when it comes to fertilizer, especially if it's synthetic. Now, if you're using something like fish emulsion or uh, any other type of fertilizer, fish emulsion, I think that's, that's completely natural. It's, it's a different ball game. Okay, so let's talk about propagation since this is my go-to all the time. I'm a huge fan of adventitious growth. You chop it, it grows back better every single time. Every time, hands down. Just be fair warned that there are things called zombie nodes. And zombie nodes are nodes that don't produce anything. They're spent, basically. And they could even have an aerial root. And they could even have a leaf uh, coming out of them. And they still are spent. And for some reason, they just aren't producing any more new uh, foliage. Uh, you know, you want to make sure there's at least two leaves on the plant because then you know it produces more leaves. Like there's a guarantee built in automatically. So it's worth the extra investment just to know that you're not wasting your money on a node that's not going to produce. I've seen a lot of stories online where people buy the plant node and then they blame themselves because it didn't produce something. But in actuality, it wasn't their fault at all. It was legitimately a bad node. So keep that in mind. The next thing I, I feel is really important when it comes to propagation is know your medium. What are you successful at um, growing things in? Like for me, I love sphagnum and I love water but the most of all is sphagnum for me. That's my growth medium. I absolutely love it. There are other plants that I'm really successful in water and then other plants I'm really successful in sphagnum. So grow your plants with love and propagate with love, but know that yes, there are things out there called zombie nodes and we want to not buy them online. Um, and we want to make sure that when we're propagating, we're not blaming ourselves for any failures because of um, you know, a, a node that doesn't produce anything or a node that just seems to die. It does happen, so be aware of that. But you want to, when you propagate, cut beneath the node. So I'm gonna show it to you really quick. Ooh, hello. I will put it on the screen here for you to see what cutting, you know, underneath the node looks like. And then you place it in sphagnum moss. That's my recommendation, just because I've had such, such a good success rate with it. Uh, that's what I say to do is place it in sphagnum moss, save yourself the trouble of, you know, any of rot or anything happening in a, in a water situation. I'm, water's fantastic. It works great as well. It's wonderful. But for me, I just, I, I prefer sphagnum. With propagation, I feel like it's really important to mention that you don't want to completely submerge 
the stem into the soil. You want to get it in there enough so that it's covered and there's, there's place for it to grow and you want it to be supported. So if you're cutting a big leaf like this off, you're gonna to wanna to have a stake, you're gonna to wanna to give it support, you're gonna to wanna to do a couple of things there. But if it's just one of the nodes that you're cutting off of your plant, let's say there's no leaf on it and you're propagating it, make sure that it's in, um, I, I did it where it's buried in the sphagnum and then I did it where it's kind of sitting on the top with the aerial roots in the soil. Let me show you. So this is an example of one that was buried, but it wasn't, it, there was no success. So I ended up pulling it out and setting it on top of the sphagnum so that it wouldn't rot the core, right, of the core, the, the node cutting. So I placed it on top of the soil and you can see that these new aerial root, these are new, okay? And this is relatively new. But this little guy right here was the very first, can you see that? That was the very first leaf that grew. It was kind of, you know, uh, it's, it's different. <laughs> it was very small. Anyway, so I was concerned. So I pulled it above the sphagnum to see how it would grow. And it worked out. So it, it worked. Then, I can show you this one where I completely submerged it. And, and then I just recently had a, uh, I don't know what happened, but it, it broke. I think someone knocked it over. It's a very sad day for me. Anyway, so here's the bottom, new growth. That's a good sign. Here is, here is where the node is right underneath here, but it's under, you, can, you can't see it. So I've buried it in, but it's right there. I don't want to pull away too much sphagnum, but it is right there. So you can kind of see it. I've tried it this way. I'm so sorry. I don't know what happened. But this is what you want to buy when you buy a plant. You want to have your first leaf, and then you want to see a new growth. You have to have more than one leaf when you're buying online. When you're spending a lot of money on a plant, you need two, you need two leaves, or else you could be getting a zombie node. You don't know. And um, roll it to this over here. This one hasn't produced a leaf yet. And, they, and this one was propagated at the same time as all the other plants I just showed you. So I think it might be a zombie uh, node. I don't know. I, 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 if it grows something, I'll let you know. But we interrupt this video to give you an update on this wonderful nub that turned into this new growth. Check it out. Yay. I'm in the plant garage, by the way. And for those of you who are new to my channel, I have this crazy plant garage, which is like a plant shop, I guess you could say, with all these grow lights and whatnot. Anyway, um, go ahead and look for my other videos where I talk about all that stuff. But for today, I wanted to give you an update. The front of the leaf, meh, not so great. Uh, but this is the update. Look, the nub turned into a brand new growth, which means a new plant, aerial root starting. Yay, success. Anyway, that's my tips on propagation. Make sure you cut between the node, put it in a good grow medium. Let it dry out between, not dry out, dry out, but let it dry out enough between waterings because you don't want to encourage rot on the node cutting. So I try to let my sphagnum dry out almost all the way uh, and before I water it again. And I do water it with a um, like a diluted fertilizer. So keep that in mind too, that you want to give it a little bit of food. You want to place it in really good lighting. Same rules apply lighting, food, fertilization, um, and you know, I don't have a humidifier running in there because I have a ton of plants. Um, so, you know, that's another way to get humidity also to kind of loop it back to humidity. Tons of plants equals higher humidity and there are tons of plants in the room where these guys are. So, well, normally where they are. I'm in the studio right now filming this. So I brought them in here to be with me. Anyway, important pieces of advice for insect prevention. For these guys, you have to wash the leaves with your hands with soap and water. 
Pesticides, I'm not a big fan of, but obviously if it's a worst case scenario and you need to use them, there are probably a lot of platforms where you can check out what kind of pesticides you could use, but I don't use pesticides. I use soap and water, alcohol, um, like a 90, 75%, I believe, or 90% rubbing alcohol diluted with water. Um, I've used, uh, neem oil is my big go-to, but you have to be careful with neem oil. If you place a plant after you've treated it with neem oil in the sunlight, it will burn the leaves. It's like putting baby oil on a baby and putting them in the sun. You don't want to do that. It's not a good idea. Even though in the 1950s, that's what they recommended to build a tan on a baby, but that's for another TikTok. So make sure that you are not treating it with neem oil and then putting it in the sunlight. Make sure that you do treat it with neem oil, but that you, you know, you rub it around, you, you rinse it off and, and then you put it back in its regular spot. Don't spray and then walk away. That's not recommended. You will burn your leaves, especially if it's in a really brightly lit area. But remember, bright and direct light is the way to go with these guys. If they don't need to be in the direct sunlight, it will burn their leaves. I think I have an example of a burnt leaf. I already showed it to you, but there's another one. They will bleach out the leaves too. Like it will become like yellowish on, in the area where the sun was hitting it, or it will become brown. So keep that in mind, neem oil, horticulture oil, any oil that you put on the leaves, yes, rub it around, rub it, you know, wash it with them and then rinse it off. So that way it's not going to be burning your leaves in when they're sitting in the sunlight. So I'm a big neem oil person. Um, I'm a big horticulture oil. Horticulture oil is a little stronger than neem oil, beware. Sometimes whitish or light variegation does not respond well to that. So keep that in mind. Uh, another big thing with these plants is spider mites. But if you're using a precaution and you're washing the front and the back side of the leaves, you really gotta act like you're washing like, like, like it's a baby. <laughs> Okay, I remember when my daughter was a little baby, I'd have to wash between her little fat rolls when she was just a little baby. And you know, when you're taking care of a plant that's really, you know, important and special, you have to take the time to wash those leaves. You just have to. If all else fails and you're a busy person and you don't have time for it, spray it off in the shower, okay? Use some soap spray, spray it off, neem oil, you know, let it set, let it soak in let it kill whatever's on there, then soap and water and then rinse it off again, okay? Or just to save time, because I've done this too, I'm a busy woman as well. Uh, you know, if sometimes all I have to do, all I have time to do is to shower it off with soap and water in the shower, that is better than nothing. But doing it regularly in a routine fashion is what's going to help you prevent your pest breakouts. So, Spray it with a neem oil, do a soap and water, a rub around, spray it off once every couple weeks or once a month at least. I would spray it off every time I water it. If you have a bathtub that you can do that in or if you can wheel it outside, spray it off. That's great. If you don't though, if you live in a small apartment or something, you don't have the space to spray it or to wheel it, just get yourself a nice big bucket. I would get like one of those big shoe ones that you like put under your bed. And then I would just go to town with each leaf. I would just wash it over the bucket and I would um, just wipe it with a cloth. And I feel like it, it, you know, that alone is really what's helped me with my plants is washing it with soap and water with a big bucket. Because sometimes these are, I have so many plants, I don't want to bring them to the bathtub, even though I have bathtubs nearby. I just want to wash it in its spot and then go. So that's my advice for pest treatment and pest pre prevention. So what happens if you have a catastrophic, super bad pest infection? And let's just pretend it's mealybugs, okay? Mealybugs are generally pretty harmless to the plant. Uh, they're just really super annoying and gross and they can spread everywhere like in uh, like a snap of a finger because they 
have the ability to live on non-living things. I've come to find these last several years is that if you have like a hanging basket or you have something that's touching this and it has mealybugs that can get on them or they live in the soil, they live on the plant pot underneath, like on the lip under underneath side of that or they live on the bottom. You really have to be careful with mealybugs or and thrips because they fly they hide in places you wouldn't even think of. So mealybugs, get rid of them. They are awful and they will suck your plant. But the spider mites are what are gonna cause the damage on these plants and thrips. Thrips are evil. They will really damage your monstera. So my advice if you have thrips or mealybugs or spider mites, Immediately treat the plant, take all, as much of the soil as you can get away, treat the soil, replace the soil with new soil um, if this is a bad infestation, and really keep up on your maintenance of treatments. You have to do it once a week. You have to. There's no way to get around that. Um, and it, it, well, it won't take that long once you do the initial investment of time, which is removing the soil gently removing the soil, replacing the soil with a really good, healthy aeroid mixture. If you're curious about what I use for my aeroid mixture, click the link in the description below. It'll take you to a video where I talk about my soil recommendations for aeroids. This is an aeroid, okay? You know, because it has aerial roots and that's what an aeroid has. Um, yeah, so that's pretty much in a nutshell my recommendations for this beauty to grow a big one. I have had a few questions though, so I'd like to spend a little bit of time to do a little Q&A. Um, I've had some viewers ask me questions about, um, you know, I have a yellowing leaf, what is that? Or it's yellowing on the edges, or it's browning on the edges. So if you are in that family of uh, viewers who have commented recently on my videos and you've asked me questions about yellowing leaves, it's usually an overwatering or an underwatering situation. Um, you know, I, I had a viewer ask me if it was fungus or mold or, or something along those lines. Generally, no, uh, that's not the case. Usually it's overwatering or underwatering or it's really not good lighting. I've had browning in bad lighting situations and I've also had yellowing in bad lighting situations. So think about lighting as well. Do I have my plant in enough sunlight? Because remember, sunlight is their food. And if they're not getting enough nourishment from the sun, they're not going to thrive. So that's something you really need to consider. Uh, so again, it could be watering, it could be lighting. So there are a couple of things. So check your plant's uh, position. Where is it in the room? Where uh, is it receiving sunlight? Uh, the Thai constellation happens to need more sunlight than the, uh, you know, the Monstera deliciosa. Darker leaves mean less sunlight needed. Lighter leaves mean that more bright and direct light is needed to get the chlorophyll that the plant needs. And it has to make it using the sun. So something to think about. Uh, that was a big one. Another question that viewers have asked me is about the nodes. About, oh, I, have, I just bought a node. I wanna make sure that I'm not gonna kill it. My advice, hands down every time it's worked for me, place the node in sphagnum moss. Place the node that's in sphagnum moss in a brightly, you know, bright and direct light, not like blazing down, but bright and direct light. Let the sphagnum dry out mostly before you water it again. Over time, you will find that, you know, you'll, you'll have a beautiful, gorgeous plant. So that's what I've used in the past. And there you have it. That is the complete Thai constellation guide for care and propagation and insect prevention and treatment. Thank you for joining me today for this super exciting video. If you are new here, hit that subscribe button and notification button to be informed when I post new videos. Until then, I look forward to seeing you guys again back here. See you later. Bye.